Is it a case where the parents of the higher socioeconomic groups actually know that they're speaking more words to, this, to their children or, or do they know that they need to speak more words to their children or do they just inherently do that? That's really an excellent question because the one question that wasn't answered by the Hart and Ridsley research, and that was the research on how different parents talk to their children, um, doesn't, doesn't answer the question of why do parents in higher socioeconomic environments tend to talk more. I suspect it's probably fourfold. I, I suspect that part of it is that they were spoken to as children, so they're modeling the way their parents parented. So it gets to be kind of a, a, way, a cultural difference in the way mm. children are raised. Secondly, I think that parents who have more money are under less stress, and they have the luxury of sitting around and talking. Whereas I think parents who are below the poverty line or struggling to make ends meet often have two jobs. They come home, they're exhausted. They have laundry to do. They have the house to clean. They have groceries to buy. They have bills to pay. And they just don't have that same luxury of, oh, let's sit down and talk about things mm. and let's play a game together. They're just trying to get through the day. I think there's also the other issue of the more educated you are, the more words are part of your life. You've been going to school, you've been reading a lot. So talking is something that is part of what you've been exposed to, part of what you do. You like to read, you like to talk about what you read, you like to discuss things. I think in families where there hasn't been a lot of education, talking is not the way they communicate. They, they like to listen to music or they might like to sit down and watch television. Um, and then finally, I think it is it may have to do with how many parents are in the home. If, if you are below the poverty line, you're more likely to be a single parent. And single parents, I think, are working much harder both to earn the living and to raise the children. If you have two parents in the home, oftentimes one of them might have the time to sit down and talk with a child. So I think there are four factors at least that might contribute to the differences that mm. we see. I can imagine that issue of single parenting must be a very sensitive issue as well across a broad number of, of groups. I mean, anyone who would be a single parent would, would feel very sensitive to that issue. Is, is there a way that we can encourage people to recognize that and turn that around? Possibly. Uh, there's a woman who's um, been talking, Alison Gopnik is a um, professor at Berkeley, a researcher, who's talked about the fact that in all the other cultures and in other times, humans did what she called allo parenting. So if a parent was very busy, if a mother was part of a tribe or a father was part of a tribe, and they had 100,000 things to do, grandparents actually, or parents within the organization or community would take on the parenting role. And I think that, that maybe we can do that. We could help parents be more sensitive. If you're a single parent, recognizing the pressure you're under, recognizing how hard it is, and providing community resources so that we can have allo parenting so that you could have some place to take your child and not perhaps a daycare center all the time, but just maybe... Mm take them to a community, a woman in the community who loves children and loves to play with them and loves to talk to them and give the single parent time to just relax and decompress and then have someone who really likes being with children um, be with the children and do that kind of stimulation. We've, we've just gotten away from using grandparents and using aunts and uncles and extended families to help us. So maybe we could find community ways to do it. Mm -hmm.